Hi, it's Tuesday and welcome to Soulful. Today we have content producer and filmmaker Raymond Spencer and he is going to talk with us about Can't Stop, Won't Stop Telling Stories. Hi and welcome to Soulful. Hello. I'm sorry. Hello. Hey, Nakia. <laughs> I'm Nakia. I'm Janet. I Toya. And today. And I'm Raymond. Yes, you are Raymond. <laughs> so, how's everybody doing today? I'm wonderful. I'm pretty. I'm wonderful. I don't what? You don't sound like your wonderful self. You're not bu bubbly and bouncy and all those B words. Oh, well, watch out with the B words, but <laughs> but yes, I am. I am. Okay, so what oh. did we all work on today? Um, well, uh, my day was spent running errands. In addition, I worked on. Uh, oh, I'm having. What what's that thing called? What's some things I be doing? What are you working? Presentations. Um, I did a presentation. I also worked on um sending out some emails, some follow up emails. I had a discovery call, and I think that's it. Yeah. You were pretty busy today. Yeah, me just. I didn't she was so serious. She was she was yeah very busy today. How about you, Toy? Yes, ma'am. Uh, so I was changing over email. Usually we always use uh, G Suite or Google Workplace, right? Well, I tried to use what was the hosting email and just things didn't go so well. You know, I was missing messages. And so I just switched uh, switched over all email for GoGiga and added all the aliases and all that kind of stuff. So I was working on email this morning. Yes, Why would it. you even try the hosting I don't, email. you know, sometimes you want to try something different and just see Not how it works email, I don't. <laughs> So, won't do that no more. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, what did I do today? I worked on MailerLite and fixing our um, new member, what is it called? Automation. And I made mistakes. So, people got emails that they weren't supposed to get. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oops on my part, but you know, I'm human. And it is what it is. Yes, you so, are. Right, what did you work on today? Oh, wow. Um, today, uh, I've been up since about one more. Uh, you know, promoting a new video that got released. It's called, uh, it's by uh, a band called AC Thomas, uh, featuring Tim Chance and Colt Ford. So, um, this. So hot. It did about eighteen thousand spins yesterday. So I'm just pushing it out as my to say uh, who won me. Cool. I don't want to share that you guys. Where's she go? I don't know. Uh, I don't, don't know. Okay. So today's guest is Mr. Raymond Spencer. Raymond holds a bachelor degree in videography from Rutgers University and an associate's degree in communications. As an actor, he stars as Ezekiel Archery. Nope, that's Arche. In Slavery by Another Name, a PBS documentary about post emancipation slavery. He is the writer, director, and cinematographer of The Blue Wall, a conspiracy against citizens, and an award winning filmmaker, published author, accomplished actor professional photographer and drone pilot. And today he will be talking about Can't Stop, Won't Stop Telling Stories. How are you today, Raymond? I am great. Um, and uh, I'm grateful. I'm grateful to be here. Thank you very much for the invitation. 
we're we're glad to have you. We're glad to have you. It's nice to meet you. Yeah, I just meet you for the first time. Yes. Did I hear him correctly? Um, I think we're Same having there. some Same audio here. issues. Okay. Yeah, I think we have a lag, Toya. I think so as well. Can y'all hear me okay? Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. That's all right. We're so glad that you're here with us, Raymond. Yeah, so Raymond, I would love to know more about Ezekiel Archery. Is it Archie? Is everyone frozen? I'm not frozen. Oh, okay, okay. I would love to know more about slavery by another name. Is he still there? Yes, he was frozen, but um, now he's back to being frozen. Oh, yes. Um, slavery by another name. Slavery by another name is a PBS documentary. It's about the emancipation of slavery. Um, and the premise is that once slavery was abolished, it continued under different names. Uh, that is chattel slavery um, and things like that. So uh, I play Ezekiel Archie. Um, absolutely. That is the reason that prisons were created, uh, according to the documentary, to control black people after slavery. was to put black people back in slavery. Uh, Constitution today, the 13th Amendment says slavery is abolished except it is being punished for crime. So it's mm -hmm. still going on right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Anybody have any questions? Oh, did it was he concluded speaking? I think so. Okay, I guess on my end, it's um, it seems like it's a lag, so I'm not sure. Um, where the ending is. Um, so what made you decide that you wanted to be a content producer? Um, well, Janet, I wanted to be a content producer because as an actor, uh, me and my partners, we started, you know, the ownership was, and it was in those that had written it, it was in those that had created the characters and the stories. Uh, and those that were shooting and producing, that's where the ownership was. So uh, that's where that came from. And it's, it's my area of expertise also. It's also what I love to do. Um, it's really a love to make uh, other people see what you think. For instance, if you were my client, I could make people mm -hmm. see what you think. So. How do you uh, prevent you burnout? I love, I love creating content but I get burned out on it so quickly. So you love to create content as well. How do you prevent the burnout in that? Yeah, I love to create. Yeah, we got a little bit of lag, Nakia. Oh, I'm sorry. How do you prevent burnout when it comes to creating content for other people? Um, I, I simply, um, I could just put it down or I switch gears to another creativity mode. I create in so many different areas. If I'm editing something for somebody and it's long, I may just switch over to, I may get ideas for a song. I'll start writing that. I could do other parts of the project, like stop editing it and just do the titles on it. Um, so I have a couple of different outlets, but when it gets to the point where it's bad, you just kind of put it down. Just put it down and um and putting it down actually helps because once you put it down uh you're not actually working on it with your fingers and stuff on the keys but your brain still has hold of it and it's processing and it can solve things for you when you're not actually working on it mm, mm. That's like have you ever mm. figured something out while you were asleep like woke up with the ants, like struggling with something and then went to sleep and then you woke up you had figured it out yes very much so there it is or are you remember all the what time you, even when i'm asleep even when i'm asleep i do it or you remember you know like you was looking for something and then you remember like when you're asleep oh 
that's where it was. It was like you get up to go find it right then and there because you know if you go back to sleep, you may lose it again. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had that problem last night. Me and the cat was having a problem. And when I went to sleep, I kept dreaming about the cat. So my husband was like, you know you was having a cat all night. Mm. Crazy. So is your is most of your content yeah. circled around um yeah. politics and without even Afri trying. Oh, okay, okay. And where did the love for being a filmmaker come from? I'm I'm losing you. Where did the love for being a filmmaker come from? Can you hear me? Um, I've been this way since I was a kid, as far as I can remember. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. You guys can hear me? So yes. I, I, I think and I remember that I've been like this since I was a kid. And the reason I, I remember it so vividly is because uh, growing up in the 70s, televisions were big enough for children to climb inside of them if there were no tubes in them. So when they were thrown out and they were on a curb and stuff, we would climb in them and we would act like the news people and stuff like that. And I've just always had this fascination <clears throat> go into the box mm -hmm. and I had to figure it out. Like it's, it's how it worked. It's fascinating to be able to look at TV and, and just explode what I'm seeing right in front of me, break it down, know what they use to make it. And then you know, go back and recreate it. Like it's uh, it's really great. It's really great. And like now with my film degree, it's an obligation for me to tell stories about Black people because we are up against a lot. And the people who have been telling stories about us are not telling stories according to us. Um, mm -hmm. So there's this obligation to tell these stories of these powerful black people, these beautiful black people, these intelligent black people that we are. And that's why I can't stop and I won't stop. I can't write it into a, I'll make it into a song, like I did a song about uh, George Floyd when he was killed. I uh, a song about him and I even got to show up and pick them, uh, uh, a cop killing an unarmed black man at a traffic stop. So if you could name your five top um, producers or filmmakers, who would they be? He going in. Oh, okay. Come on back, Raymond. Come on back. <laughs> oh, shoot. Hey, Melissa, thank you for joining us today. Hey, yes, thank you. While we're waiting for him to come back, we can show um, we can show him a, a little short, like a little video clip he did, looks like here, a droid one. Yes, Raymond is an accomplished FAA approved droid pilot as well. Let's play that. Hey, Nashville business owners. This is the Urban Drone King. I want to ask you a question. When you see the TV and you see the news reporters putting up those beautiful drone shots, don't you wish you could have those in your commercial advertising for your business? Well, now you can. <laughs> if you want your commercial advertisements for your business, be sure to contact the Urban Drone King, 862-216-1110. That's 862-216-1110. Or contact us at DroneKing at gmail.com. Urban Drone King Aerial Services, a Nashville-based company that provides nationwide drone services. That's pretty cool, Raymond. That so did you, cool. yeah, did you, uh, I know you didn't, you did the shots. Did you do the, the whole video, the editing? And I know that's your voice too, right? Thank you. Yeah, did you do the whole video, the whole thing? Bobby Brown. Bobby Brown. Yes. Oh, very cool. Very, very cool. Nice. Yes. 
Very and that's well, a, well, another well, part well. of what I mean by the content creator. I create in different areas, so. Huh? I say very well I rounded. Two people say something. How did you get into the drone deal? Uh, this definitely helps out, uh, Nakia. Into doing what? The drones. Using the, using the drones. All right. He's coming back. Okay. So, Miss Janet, while we wait for him to come back, are you looking forward to your client trip? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Everyone, Miss Janet is a personal liaison, and so as one of her clients, you could she could go places with you. <laughs> I think I figured out something. And ain't that the truth? I go oh. a lot of places. Even the client um, I had the discovery call today with, um, and it's so funny, we met at another event, but to know she knew me from years past when I facilitated as a um, volunteer coordinator, and she loved my skills then. But and now she's in the place where she um does like weddings and stuff. So she was um glad that we finally met face to face in this capacity. Nice. And yeah. so she was like, Well, sometimes I travel and I was like, Okay. So <laughs> okay. Yeah, you know, so but it was nice. it was a networking potential maybe client call. That's great. That's great. Yeah. You never know who's watching, you guys. You never know who's watching. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's good to maintain good relationships because you don't know, like 15 years down the line, you can, you know, end up working with somebody that you met 15 years ago, what have you. Yeah, because she said that. She said, well, I've always met you. I just never got a chance to, um, you were always facilitating or running something. And I was like, where? <laughs> I don't remember, and I don't remember who she was, and she was like, "It was um 2009, and we did was the I said, "He's bad." Oh, I oh okay, so I'm sorry. I think Very it's good. where I was in the house. I think it's where I was in the house. Yeah, okay. this is much better quality. Yay, yeah, yeah. we can hear you. Ooh, hi, nothing. sorry yes. everybody. It's all good. You play the guitar, Raymond? Uh, oh snap! I done told on myself. Nope. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Get my nerves. <laughs> oh, shoot. Oh, uh, that is. Okay, I bought that for a gift as to myself when I graduated uh, with my bachelor's degree from Rutgers. Okay. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I bought an acoustic guitar that I can't play either. I can strum it a little bit. Yeah, I can. A little I can bit? Repeat, I can repeat something on it. I know okay. that. Okay. <laughs> okay, nice. Very nice. Okay, so Raymond, you're a filmmaker. You know, you create all kind of cool stuff. I've heard you. Yeah, I've heard. I know of your oratory skills. I've seen you act. Man, that's Do you crazy. sing too? Do you sing? Okay, so I'm not gonna say that I'm I'm anybody's singer. Um, what I I will do is write a song and just do it myself. And if other people enjoy it, then that's fine. But that's part of my storytelling, and it's part of my. Um, it's part of my impetus to create at will. Like mm -hmm. I want to be able to show young people how they can do this anytime, all the time. Like I've had to wait for people to master my songs. I learned how to master songs two days ago. Oh wow! Mm. That's yeah. right. That's that's right. That's right. I, I'm smarter that's than cool. I was yesterday. So that's right. I think Absolutely. stuff like that is cool. So I be on that kind of stuff. Like I like knowing stuff, but it makes me efficient. You know, Nakia, yeah. whenever I need to create, I just make it. I hop from one thing to the next. And to have to wait for deliverables from somebody else, it just. It Do just don't, it drive you nuts? don't it just drive you completely it's, batty? It's very unprofessional. I can do what I can do. Real man, like real man, real man. Come on, preach again. Say it one so, more time. It's very unprofessional to be waiting on people for stuff. Say it again. Say it louder. It's very unprofessional, Buddha. 
be waiting for your deliverables so that you can move forward in the project because i mean i can chop chop like yeah you waiting two three weeks on people what kind of ridiculous i could have handled a few more clients in that time Mm -hmm. i mean this is not good business um I just had a conversation with my daughter. She was waiting for uh, photos from her wedding photographer. And mm-hmm. I have delivered my daughter about two or three packages of photos and videos since then. Her mama called me and said, man, your stuff looks better than the people we hired. Wow. Ah. Hey. <laughs> but it's cool, though. But my daughter was saying, it's like, wow, I wonder when the girl is going to be done. Like, And it's like, but that's my daughter. She's a... She she raises money for black businesses. She's uh she owns the only black business directory in the greater Pittsburgh area. Oh wow. Um, yeah, so she raised she she supports black businesses, but we did have a little bit of talk and she was waiting for her stuff and she's not gonna give up on folks, but we discussed these type of things about timeliness yeah, and gotta hold them accountable. Yeah. We just want them to be better. That's all they'll get more business as a result of it. It ain't about, you know, slandering it on anyone or saying anything against mm-hmm. them. Um we just want our people to stand up so that we can get that respectability that we're asking for. You won't have to ask for it. That's right. That's right. I get hired sometime without filing applications. They That's just right. call me up and say, we want you to do something for us because they like the way I work. That's yes. right. So do you find that you have to, okay, so you do the filmmaking and the content producing. Do you find that sometimes one overlaps into the other? or you might use two at the same. So if you're in the filmmaking, are you writing the films or are you actually doing the production producing part of it? And then with that sense, maybe the content where you might rewrite a script or rewrite a scene, do do they sometimes coincide or you're able to keep them totally separate? That's a really good question. Um, I'm smart, I'm just not, I'm, I'm, I'm not only cute, I'm smart too. Yes, it you. Is, yes, you are cute. Well, I, I, just, you. I, I just want it to be understood by, by by my younger people that I teach this stuff too, that all of this stuff does work together because I I get a thought. I'm going to try to run through it real quick. I get a thought. I jot it down as a couple of lines as an idea. Those couple of lines, I add to them later and turn it to a poem. That poem, when I speak it the right way, it becomes a song when I repeat a certain part of it again and again and again. That, 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 that song can be turned into a short story. A short story can be turned into a long story. A long story can be scripted. A script is a book. It is all the same, Janet. It just mm-hmm. depends on if you can shift those gears, if you can switch gears and, and, and you see it that way. There's nothing that you can't see that you can't make. Nothing. Wow. That is such a good analogy the way you you said it. Cause I think sometimes people don't comprehend past the window that they're in front of. Mm-hmm. 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 Whoa. Cause you're right. A couple of lines can be a poetry. A couple of do you add more lines to it? You start yeah, singing it, it becomes a song. Looking at it. Right. Yeah. Looking at yeah. it. It 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 all all it also makes it seem like it's not as overwhelming. So maybe I shouldn't get burned out when I'm creating content. I should repurpose it in a different way so that I'm still moving forward. It may be that you're at some kind of junction with it. Um, like you may be kind of visualizing it or it's coming to you in another way. Mm-hmm. Or it might be that you're thinking about it so hard yeah. that you're stunting your own self. It could be, yeah. That's why when that's when it's good to put it down. Mm-hmm. Put it down. So, do you write all everything down, or do you voice record with some things? Because I'm sure as much things come to you, do you find that sometimes, like say, you know, you're this evening you're watching TV and the desk is over there, but you happen to be like, oh, that was a cute jingle. So, da 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 da. Do you sometimes voice record, or do you? it's more effective for you to write everything down. Um, I use everything at my disposal. Um, cool. My telephone has a voice recorder on it. I use it often. Okay. Uh, when I get the idea, if I, if, I, if I drop it into the phone, I usually go back and write it later so that I can expand on it. Um, okay. Once I have it down on paper, I can explode it. 
I can and I can see like all of the words that rhyme with the words I have down. I can see references that connect to the words that I said. It just I'm very visual, so the words help me see things also. So okay. to write it down is helpful, and it and then you get the retention. You get it burned in from thinking it and writing it. It helps with memory retention. I don't remember there was um like a an oldie but goodie like. I remember listening to one of their interviews and he said I would write a paper I would write on a paper bag. <laughs> yeah. No, whatever I found or got the inspiration, whatever was closest to me that I could write on, I would write and I would get to writing, put it in my pocket, and then when I got to, I would transpose it to my notebook or or whatever. So yeah, yeah. that's why I asked you that question. Yeah, it helps. It helps. Um but 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 then I also don't have a fear of not writing things down anymore because when you own ideas, they circulate, they come mm -hmm. back around. And that kind of tells me what may be important for me to say to others when it keeps coming back around. Mm. Something is being spoken to me. I missed it. It keeps coming back around. Mm. Need okay. to do something with it. Okay, okay. Mm, interesting. That's interesting. That's very interesting. I wonder if that's yeah. how Koya's little ideas come up. <laughs> say say, say again, Koya, the kid. Koya is full of ideas. Koya is full of ideas. And oh, so yeah. I'm wondering if that's her, how her ideas come up. Oh, they just come up and I just tell y'all and we just figure out if anything makes sense. Mm. What happens? It's good to have some collab on it, though, because um, <laughs> right. you can come up with the stuff, but other people, they'll think it's great and everything. But when they start <laughs> what if in it, that's when it's able to become something that everybody can relate to. Because the what ifs get answered and the what if we try these get answered also or they get explored. And then you take away what doesn't work. And then the collaborative effort makes this all of this dope stuff that we're doing work. So Amen. I love that's why we having a great talk now, not just because I'm here, because I'm talking with you and y'all. Is there any particular producer you would like to work with? I want to work with those who work with me. I can't say that I saw everybody's stuff, you know, that you saw or you know about. Um, for the PBS documentary, I had a chance to be directed by Sam Pollard. Sam Pollard is one of the great uh, black documentary filmmakers for us, and that was a privilege for me. But okay. on on a basic, on a very simple level, and I love simplicity. Who want to make a film? Let's do it. Love it. But, but I just I, I agree with you. I agree with you. So all the pretensions and everything that everybody put up. I don't really have that because I'm an actor. I don't really have fear of embarrassment. So I'll do everybody's script and I can be as professional as I need to be at any given moment. I switch gears, my mm -hmm. speech patterns, the way I stand, the clothes I wear, I might change them if I need to be a specific kind of person for a specific kind of meeting. But I know what I know, whether I got a t-shirt or a suit on. For some people, hey. you just need, you need to satisfy some people, so. We change clothes sometimes. What was that, Jay Z? Change clothes. Was that yeah, Jay -Z? yeah, yeah. But a little yeah. bit of Tina in there too. Yeah, we, yeah. we get it. We put on a new attitude. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> well, good old Aretha said, "Give her her respect." Yeah, yeah, yeah it's true. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. sometimes we have to help them behave well, help others behave well. Mm -hmm. We walk in with an image, and don't allow them to shake it or disturb it. Why? Because not only did my, my did I change it to a suit, I walk a little differently. I'm actually a little taller than my short self is. <laughs> when, hey! And um, yeah, when I when I speak, something comes out of my mouth that make other people look up and say, who's talking? I agree. Especially when you know your craft and you're able to articulate it in a way that's understandable. It does put people on their toes. So you yeah. just... You have to be comfortable in your skin that you're in, no matter what it is that you're doing. Yeah. From then the janitor the to right the on. president. Yeah. Man, yeah. when I'm a janitor, my floors are so clean. I'm a professional all around. 
You could lick my floors if I was a janitor. <laughs> you heard. <laughs> Yo, Raymond, where all this confidence come from? Um, it comes from the place where Janet just spoke of, um, knowing what I'm talking about. What do I have to mm. be afraid of? I am God's son. When I yeah. don't know something, I won't try to act as if I do, but I would listen to learn. So it's uh, it's about respecting what other people know too. Like when I'm in the group with y'all and somebody is speaking on your specifics, I would I defer. Why? Because it makes us look best if somebody that knows this stuff the best speaks on all of our behalf. So let me fall back and support. So um, yeah. the confidence is just that I know what I'm talking about. Uh, and, and, and again, <laughs> The fun in making people see what I think, I also enjoy it when I use words as I speak. Mm -hmm. When I spoke to you guys about, you know, the art form and how it escalates from one medium to another for me, you guys fully understood it. That was so great right. for me to have explained it in a way that helped you see what I'm saying. I got you. I got you. Nice. Was there um, an uncle or a mother or anybody that was influential in helping you um, develop be, be being an entrepreneur and, and also the confidence? Was there any people in place? Well, I'll say the entrepreneur, uh, the entrepreneurship came from doing bad stuff. Okay. Uh, but it translates into um, legal activities and uh, the adult things that we do now, but it came from a place. And um, my daughter, mother, she helped me uh, get it together when I stopped getting in trouble. Nice. Uh, she helped me uh, start my, I had a beauty supply for 15 years. And uh, wow. she, had, yeah, she had a beauty supply also helped me get on my feet uh, when, she, when I came, helped me get my store together, her and her husband. Uh, so um, big shout out to uh, Monica and Tuck Austin. Um, nice. So yeah. That's my daughter's mother, and they helped me open a beauty supply, and we've just been going since then. I started with a hot dog truck and then bought a brick brick and mortar structure for uh, beauty supply, um, following their advice. And uh, it, nice. it was really good, but as an actor, I wasn't able to go audition for roles when I right, wanted right. to. So I, I just I needed to be freer, and it just was kind of paining yeah. me like to not be able to go to New York and audition for this stuff. And, uh, my brother Murad just helped me out. I, I, I give the beauty supply to him. You know, just help he help me pay out the bills I had left. And I just told him I had to go try this stuff out and do what I do this art that I wanted to do. And uh, it's nice. a struggle, but um, it's just what my heart is. It's a struggle. Yeah. But, you know, mm -hmm. I love doing it. Yeah. And we it. and we making history too. So we making yeah. history when we That's tell true. these stories. It's not history now because we just did it. But when we went to college, we learned from books that people wrote 10 and 20 years before us. That's us if we write books now. That's right. That's right. So important to tell our stories. Yes. So Can't important. stop, won't stop. That's right. I'm dead. You can't see me. I'm with you, bro. That's right. I probably messed that dance all up. <laughs> it was funny watching it, though. It was funny watching it. My daughter Did would it. really be like, um, Daddy. Diddy would not be proud right about that. <laughs> work with work with me, dog. Work with me. <laughs> oh shoot. So first of all, black beauty supplies. I where I live, um, it's the first time I ever seen black people own a beauty supply. Where I it's the first time I ever seen it. I, I, just, I, I it is. It is. I don't know how it is in y'all's areas, but it's the Asians got that market on lock. Well, that was one of the reasons that uh, she did it. And um, the name of this store is called Sisterhood Beauty Supply. Hey. So they got, they uh, they started expanding. They have two locations, one in East Orange, New Jersey, one in Eastern PA. Nice. And um, they trying to set the example that um, if we want to have things that cater to our specific needs, then we have to provide these things for us and our people. That's right. That is true. That is one of the that's reasons true. why we started our virtual assistant group. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's that's cool. And then you just took that big old leap of faith and said, I'm going and I'm gonna go do what I want to do because that's what yes. I feel in my heart. I love it. Woo! 
and people will respond. People will respond and um, come through. You just you put in that human element, and That's right. you learn how to you know talk with people and and try to help address needs that others have. And it just has a way of boomeranging to you. Yeah. <clears throat> Is there a, a prominent story that you like to tell that's so important you gotta, you know, shout it out how, however and whenever you can? Story? Story. Is there a specific story that everybody I, would want them to know? Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure, Toya, exactly where you want me to go with that. Oh, no, no, just in general. You're a storyteller. That, you know, sometimes there's that story that, every, like, you want to make sure that people get this one, you know. I just didn't know if there was one that, that was um, really important to you, any specific narrative that you want people to understand and know um, if they don't hear any other story from you. Can I grab a word? Grab this word? Of course. Absolutely. Excuse me. Absolutely. But so, ladies, what do you think about that? Um, you know, it, it hit me, like he said in school, you know, you hear these stories about people, and he, and he said 20 or 30 years ago. I'm like, no, that'd be, it's, it'd be beyond that, and it'd be the same story, and it'd be they, their story. You know, I think um, I think I have to do a better better job of telling stories, telling stories of, of my people, you know? And that, that might be my, 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 my dad, my aunt. You know, they, these are good people in my family. I got to share these stories. Somebody needs to hear them. Yeah, you know. I'm a family genealogist, so oh. I created a um a family tree website. Nice. Um, and it it connects to ancestry.com, so it has all of our historical records on it. It goes back to 18, 1890. Wow. So um, that's how I do it nice. for my family to make sure that we have those funny stories and um historical accuracy about where we came from yeah. you know being native americans and not necessarily slaves on my mom's side and things like that so yeah and and, and that's such a good great story for people um to hear i love when you when i hear you tell that story because i definitely grew up thinking that all black people you know in this country were slaves and that is just not the case yes yeah, you know, it's just not the case so that's that's a wonderful story you know how about you, Janet? Is there any story, a prevalent story, like in your family, that you think is good for people to hear that that's helpful? Um, as you all were talking about it, I was trying to think of something, but right now it's not coming to me. But I remember my mom saying, telling a lots of stories. So I'm I'm not sure at all. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want those stories to get lost. Yeah. <laughs> Um, mostly everyone dying off and um, your, my children got to know my grandparents, but you know, other children like Jaden, Jaden will never know my grandmother and things like that. So she won't hear those stories and be as well versed with his history because of that. So I think it's good for us all to have stories to tell. That's right. That's right. Yeah. On that note, if I may, yeah. Um, that's where I was going to go uh, when I returned to the seat is that I want to encourage others, um, other black people to, to tell stories because, um, like you said, we're losing people and we don't have these, these histories or these stories. You know, like for me, I like putting my grandparents in my book so that other people read about them. Um, I read about other people's grandparents in books. So um, I think it's a fun thing to do. Um, but again, it also becomes historical record once you put it into mm -hmm. a physical book. That is true. It is around for time, you know, and um, it's really important now that we do this because if everybody is paying attention, they're passing laws that says you can't teach black history in schools because it's making somebody, I ain't sure who, uncomfortable um, I think it's the people who actually did the stuff to us. They're uncomfortable. Um, oh, so um, it's very important that we tell these stories because they're actually making it a crime for teachers. They're going to arrest teachers if they teach what white people did to black people during slavery. And they actually did it. So it's just such a vital time. We have to tell these stories because they're trying to wipe out and erase um, black history 
as it happened. Like I'm old enough to know now that what's taught in history class is missing a lot of pieces from what I learned in history class. Right. Yes. Yeah, they don't teach nothing. And, you know, so it's vitally important that we tell these stories. I mean, even if you hand this legacy down your own family line, it's important, you know, and um, it should be just written into a book. It doesn't have to be the best book. That's another one of my mantras is that I don't care if I get it wrong. I care about what happens if I don't do anything. Mm. That's right. That's great. So what? I spelled five words wrong. I wrote a four hundred <laughs> page book. Get out my face. Hey, Raymond. That's right. And and for those that want to write some, I got another saying: critics don't create. So, so forget true. those people that's talking about what you did and how bad it was. Like big up to Simone Biles. Yeah. You know, big people up. talking about her like. That white dude, Morgan, he quit his own job right on a live interview. And then he want to talk about her because she had mental anguish and issues to deal with. Like, he quit because he was being persecuted for some foul stuff he did. There's a difference. That's a difference. Tell your story. Like, you know, be unapologetic, as they say. You know what I mean? When my gay brothers and sisters used to say that to me, you know, unapologetic, do all the snapping and all that. I wouldn't say stuff like that because it felt kind of weird. But no, I tell my stories unapologetically now because nobody is going to tell them for us. And if they tell them, it just don't seem to be told right. Man, that part. Movie industry. We only get the Academy Award for being a piece of shit cop or a whore. Yeah. Denzel Ooh. got it for one thing and Holly got it for the other. Hey. How, much, how much good work did they do? Well, that's how, much, right. how much bad work Denzel got? How much bad work Holly got with these historical mm -hmm. characters they played? They gave him the Academy Award for being a whore and a corrupt cop on drugs. Mm -hmm. We got to tell the stories. I'm sorry if I'm talking too much. We got to tell the stories. No, I'm, I'm listening, bro. I'm like, man, how I'm gonna, how, what's the best way to tell my story? What Your is way. the best way? Just yeah. tell it. Yeah. So you know that I'm connected. That means that means I have to enlist Raymond. <laughs> Get it wrong in the process. You cannot be criticized by people who are not creating anything. So they'll That's say right. stuff, but you can't really let that stop you from telling the story about how great your mama is, how how bad your daddy is. How, right. how, how, how about these people in our family who nobody know about? It's cool to talk about them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's 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 good stuff. And that makes me good feel good just thinking about can can don't you just see a, a story of the kid of your daddy, you know, about his you know, his life and you know that bless you and that's gonna bless countless others, you know. You know, Janet, your mama, you know, her story, you know, from here to here and and all she's done. And we can do them collectively, like if That's each one of us wrote a short story, yeah, we can just put them together in one book, mm -hmm. you know, and we can call it whatever we like. Mm -hmm. We call it whatever we like. Black people stuff. Book one. <laughs> hey! Hey, now. <laughs> we don't got to be all sophisticated. If I got, did I say sophisticated? Yeah. Whatever it meant, I understood it. Yeah, word is bomb. We ain't got to be. <laughs> We just have to do it, though. We just have to do it. Yeah. We just have to yeah, do it. That is, that is good stuff. <sighs> so, Raymond, do you have a, um, a project that, you, that, that you're able to talk about that you're working on? Right now, I'm doing other people's uh, productions, editing and shooting for other people. Uh, okay. But I have stories um, that I want to tell. Um, it's really great stuff. Uh, that I want to tell. I won't. Uh, I won't go into it right now because it, it could be a lot. Okay. Uh, but real briefly, I do have a web series that I wrote called Time and Time Again. Uh, it's about an eighteen-year-old guy named George Williams who goes to vote and gets chased away by a lynch mob when he goes to vote. Uh, mm -hmm. And while running from them, he uh, cuts through the swamp uh, and he falls in the water. So we do some TV magic and we wormhole him through time. Mm -hmm. He comes up in a puddle of water in the city of Newark, New Jersey, while Barack Obama is the president. Mm -hmm. And the weekly series covers wow. his life as he exists in this time when a black man is president and white, white women are dating black men 
children don't respect their parents he's experiencing this from week to week and episode to episode in this uh weekly series i wrote called time and time again so nice. i really want to do that nice oh that's amazing it's a it's a real adventure uh he's just uh he's actually about 227 years old because he's still 18 he just got wormhole through time right and uh into the year of uh i have it 2016 or something 14 something i forget mm -hmm. exactly but uh he's a uh, yeah he has to live it he had all this thing is explained to him by these two black professors who find him on the ground in the water pick him up and try to take him to the hospital oh wow and um they uh the, the george woke up and actually beat them up because he thought they were with the white people according to what they were saying and what they were talking he just woke up and he was listening and he was beating them guys up in that van the van crashed and they was just on the side of the road in the back holding george down they had to jump on him because george still a slave this boy strapped he's strong they, mm -hmm. just, they had to hold him down but while he was talking, they were just listening to him and talking to him and let him go. And they just had this conversation in the back of the van, like, where you come from, man? <laughs> and then it all just started coming out and they vowed to help him. They took him home and, you know, they was sneaking him in and out of the college university, trying to trace his lineage. And they was about to get in trouble and all this stuff was <laughs> going on. It's just a nice ride. Uh, George walking around the house one day with no underwear on because he don't know what that is. They took him to Walmart to get some underwear and they lost George because he's walking around like a child, fascinated by what he's seeing. And when they found him, when the professor found him, you know, he just started crying because people was treating George really bad because he was still dirty and had the still overalls on. And they were really judging him harsh. And uh, it's just really emotional. Like for me right now, like. Well, that's really, really interesting. Um, and so I, another question. Um, I think I heard you before, you know, kind of talking about uh, you, uh, you have a book on, on on Amazon. Do you recommend that someone starting out writing a book to, to utilize Amazon or what would you recommend? No, platform? I, would, I wouldn't recommend that. Okay. I, I did it because um, I don't want to create art and then keep it to myself. Exactly. Um, I am a conduit. When the information comes to me, I'm supposed to distribute it. Uh, I'm supposed to be one to many. Mm -hmm. The information comes down. So uh, I would say it's other ways to do it now because I don't really see any money from my book on Amazon. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I try to track this stuff down some time, but I don't really... I'm more... I'm, I'm more stuck on the obligation of telling the story okay and um i mean i want to be paid for my artwork my intellectual property and all that but when the stuff don't work out it's what makes me answer your question and tell people no don't put your book on amazon mm -hmm. put your book in the trunk of your car and you go out and you push it and you walk it around <coughs> you do it that way so you get Excuse all of me. the money for your book sales you order it from your your printer you can send them your files they'll print your books up get them back to you for a minimum cost too and you're still selling your book for what amazon is sold it for. and not only that having your book in your hand empowers other people to hire you then mm -hmm. uh you are a professional yeah. once you have written a book people yeah. see you as a source of information and uh, some kind of professional in this field so it's, it's empowering to have mm -hmm. it right in your hand Nice. That's from my girl Torea Vision of Vine. Nice. That's, that's good. You get ready, go. Okay. Nice. Yeah. This has been really cool, ladies. Glad you enjoyed it. We've enjoyed you. Yeah, I'm looking forward um, to coming coming back and, and we go a little bit deeper. This is. Um, uh oh, you want to go down the wormhole? Well, because I know you can, bruh, and I want to go there with you. <laughs> you know, go. I like hanging out with y'all intellectuals. You, the kill, I learned oh, a that, lot. Oh, is that what I am? You is. Okay. That's that's part of <laughs> that's part of you. You're multidimensional. So, <laughs> yes, well, thank yes, you yes. very much. Oh, thank you. So, 
hold on one second, baby. We're just about through, okay? So, um, Raymond, we, we put your website and so forth up here. Is that the best place for people to contact you um, if they're interested in, in working with you? Uh, yeah, my website, my Gmail. Uh, they can book a date on my calendar on the website. Uh, okay. And they can reach out to me if they have any questions. Uh, sometimes it helps to have the conversation uh, so that I can explain. Okay. Thanks to people. Very nice. So they can book consultations with you on your website. Yeah. Very, very, very nice. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. All right. Nakia down with it for ready? Yes. What you got, sis? Any announcements? Anything else? We get on out? Oh, uh, I don't think we have any announcements. You know, we appreciate Raymond being our guest today. It was a very enlightening conversation. Makes me want to go and work on my genealogy site some more. Yeah. <laughs> um, we want everyone to like, share, and subscribe. Um, your your daughter said, "Hey, daddy, good stuff." My daughter? Yes. She um, did. Listen, man, she's the bomb, man. This is a hey, yeah. Uh, maybe y'all come on together sometime. That'd be cool. Yes, that would be listen, great. Man, I I am a fan of hers. Uh. Her tag is Cocopreneur PGH. You guys uh, look her up. Um, I told you she's the uh, Black Business Director for the Greater Business Area in Greater Pittsburgh. And uh, I'm just amazed at what she's doing. And her name is Camille Bailey. And uh, yeah, she's a uh, super man. She's just super. Uh, she's a great representative of her parents. Me yeah, and her mother be calling man. each other, cracking up, like, look what your daughter did. <laughs> That's beautiful when when parent can say that, you know. It that, is, that is so it cool. Is great. <laughs> well, well, Camille, come on, come on through the soda for sis. We want to see you yeah, on too. You, you and your daddy. How about yeah. that? Mama that can come too. Shoot. Shoot, man. Y'all, y'all gonna need all the time y'all have for her. Well, I'm I'm interested. The the you said the only black directory in yeah, the area. Yeah, yeah, black business directory for the greater uh, Pittsburgh area. Nice. We're going to the um. Virginia Black Business Expo. Yeah. What? Yeah. So that's that will be interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, we we definitely appreciate these folks that uh, you know have interest in black business and, and black folks and want us all to you know eat together, work for each other, help each other, and be the best. So kudos to you, dear Mrs. Oh, Bailey. Sure. Bless you. Sure. Yes, yeah. all that you do. For sure. All right. So. Janet, anything else? We're going to give Raymond the last words. But anything else, Janet? No. Okay. All right. Well, Raymond, take us out, bro. What's your last words for the family? Um, well, first of all, I'm going to thank you ladies for doing what y'all are doing. Um, soul to full. Um, I'll be uh, subscribing and uh, watching and seeing what's going on. Uh, and y'all let me know if I could be of any, uh, any assistance to y'all ladies um, with what y'all doing. I'd love to be a part of it. Um, but yeah, I would just repeat that everybody should write those stories down. And, um, I would say we should do a lot better job contexting relationships for our kids too. They should really know the difference between an uncle, a brother, a grandfather, an aunt, you know, all of this stuff, cause it's confusing for them. So that's part of the storytelling so that they can get it right. Like, nice. uh, our children are very confused yeah. right now. We can help them. We can help them understand some things, and so um, I'm not sure if that's what y'all were looking for for me. No, but, that's uh, good. We're looking for what's in your heart, and and I got that. I, that's my takeaway. We can help them, even when we think we can't. Just talking to them and sharing, yeah, stories and believing in them too. Like believing you know, in them, believing in them. They are significant. They're futuristic because they're gonna be here uh, after us, and Amen. we have to help them. Um, we have to help them. That's good. That's good. Well, thank you all for being here. We really appreciate you. We will see you again this time next week at 4 o'clock. And we love you. Peace. Love you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Hi, and welcome to Soul Support.